trying to figure out why I'm here. Either I'm a filler or Lauren needs some putting chips or something. I don't know what he needs, but uh, it is January. I appreciate you guys having me here. I think, you know, Ben h covers our golf program, and uh, we'll leave for our first event in two days. So it kicks off, and we have a long spring season, and we're going down and playing a little one-day match we have every year against Illinois State, a, war a warm-up match. And the, the idea of this thing is, it, it, I mean, it's an official match. It counts, but it's a way for us to gauge where we're at physically and mentally and for me to watch our guys play for three days so we can come back and get some work in because the Big Ten Match Play Championship, which sounds like a big deal, and it, it is, but it's not really a, a big, big-time event, but it's just something we want to win is in, in the middle of February. So uh, we want to go down this week and uh, get some reps in and play some golf, play a competitive team, um, and see where we're at so we can come back to our nice building, Demersion, and get some work in. So uh, we schedule our events this early for that reason, to develop our players and to uh, get ready for our a long spring season because uh, the Nationals are at the end of May, first part of June, so it's a long season. When you when, when, when you add in August till when? Third week in October is our fall season, which counts just as much as the spring. It's 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 all all counts the same. You add that with the spring, it's a pretty long season. So uh, but we we believe in that. We wanna we wanna draw it out so we can work with our guys because our program is looked upon and it is a developmental program. We want to continue to recruit the best players we can in the country. But it's hard to get those guys a lot of times. So we need to bring get players with potential, with good attitudes, good, uh, good makeup, and develop those players. So the longer we can spread our season out in the spring, the more events we can play you know, with time in between them, the more we can develop the guys. So that's, that, that's the idea this week. So. Mike, you guys have been fueled on being the underdog over the years. This year, it seems like it's a different dynamic, given the number one ranking and the players you have returning. What's the mindset going in, knowing that there's kind of a change in the way things are going? That's that's right, Matt. I got asked this week from Golf Week or a week and a half ago about that, and my personality is better as an underdog. It's more fun for me. I mean, that's just the way I've always been. Here, it's always been that way. But it's always even in my career when I played professionally, I was always kind of the underdog, and um, it's a lot more fun. Now we're the favorite, and people are trying to take knock us off. And you got Texas and Florida and UCLA as underdogs playing us, wanting to, wanting to knock us off is is different. It's fun. We embrace it. We have to get used to that that thought, but. Um, it's something that, uh, that we have to learn to handle. And I, I sensed it yesterday. Our guys didn't play that well over Christmas break. They all play in individual you know, amateur events, some in Arizona, some in Florida. Brian went to Australia and played in a big world of wide event. They didn't play as well. And I sensed yesterday their mindset and their, they're, very, they're, they're a little more short-tempered, if you will, or a little more frustrated with their game than normal. And I think it's that ranking. I think they've been sitting on it for two or three months and reading all the press clippings. And it's been a big deal for a northern program to be voted number one. Uh, at a time during the season, and the computer rankings to have us all number one. It's never been that way before you know, since the rankings have been in existence. So I think they're feeling the pressure. So it's going to be something, I'm, it's something new that I'm going to have to work with this spring and, and, uh, and, and, and embrace that and, and learn how to play with that. But for me personally, it is, it's been a little bit different too because, you know, I mean, we always can always, you know, say how poor we are and the weather's bad, they don't believe in us, and, you know, we. We're not the biggest recruits, and but now it's kind of hard to say that when we're the number one. So we got to kind of change our mindset a little bit. Thomas had a good weekend. Who's that like? Thomas Peters had a great weekend. I think he made 120,000 if you convert it to dollars and finished fourth. Beat a dozen or so, maybe 10 former major champions. Lost to Mar Martin Keimer finished what second, and uh, or Roy McIlroy finished second. Keimer finished third, and Peters finished fourth. For a 22-year-old um, young professional, it was a big week. And uh, I went over and spent time with him and worked with him and uh, just kind of counseled him and just kind of got back to our own way of thinking last week over in uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And it was a fun week for me. I'd never been there before. And, and to be in that realm and, uh, and, and to help him kind of establish his routine again was fun for me. Um, he has a, a swing coach, Pete Cowan, who works with all the top players over in Europe. Um, but he had kind of gotten lost from who he was. And uh, he told me, he says, Coach, everybody over here, they're all yes people now. His agents and his managers and his caddies and everybody. You know, when you get to that status, they don't want to say something to rock the boat. Well, he realized something wasn't right. So he wanted me to come over and kind of get back and be grounded and kind of let him get back to where we were when he developed his game here. And we spent uh, five days preparing and training. And I vetted his new caddy, which was a big deal, and um, spent time, uh, you know, getting his personality back on the golf course, understanding how to attack a golf course. His practice rounds were getting a little lazy, not as focused, and uh, it was fun for me to help him get back into that. And then I stayed for the first round and saw him shoot 65, and it was the easiest 65 I've seen in a long time. And uh, as the week went on, I watched, came back, and 
I was with jet lag. I was up at two in the morning, so I watched all the telecasts. And and um, he didn't play as great. He played solid, but you could tell the pressure was getting to him a little bit. Being in that situation, this is a big time event. Last year he lost a playoff to Miguel Angel Jimenez, who we all know on Ryder Cup teams at the Spanish Open. And so this is really a second chance to have a chance to win an event. This is a big deal over there. And um, you know he 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 did okay, but you can tell his putts were a little bit short. His his wedge play wasn't as sharp. He felt the pressure, and I told him the other day that after the event that you know that'll get better. The more he's in that position, but um, you know people are starting to take notice of who he is, and the TV's over there taking notice of who he is, and he's got a great future. I mean, he's he's going to be a, he will be a world class player here in the next next uh, you know three to eight years, I think. You said you wanted to use you know, your trip to do a little networking and uh -huh. maybe sell Illinois abroad. How'd that go? That was great. That was a big benefit for me personally to go over there because in Europe, the top teachers in Europe, the the federations all help kids grow as players. And um, I, I, I got to network and spend time with the Italian Federation head coach, Swedish National Federation, the German Federation, those guys, meet those guys, because the players they work with as juniors are now all on tour. So those guys still come out and work with the, work with the tour pros now. So those are the guys we, that we recruit from. So to go over there and spend time with those guys and, and develop those relationships, but build our brand. And people know what Illinois golf is now over there, believe it or not. And college golf is spreading in Europe. And, and uh, to go over there and make those connections is going to help us down the road, hopefully, and uh, just continue to build our network of people that we recruit from and get to know. Do you think that'll increase the number of uh, international recruits you bring in, or is that just a case? You know what? That's a good question. I think it's going to increase the number of kids we can recruit. The, the, the pool, whether we want to recruit them or not, is, is always a big thing for us because we're big in recruiting the right people. I mean, you know, I'm, I want to recruit kids that fit our program first, that we can survive with and, and thrive with and, and cry with and yell with. And then if they can play, then, then that's who I want. But um, it's going to open the pool where more kids will look at us first than, than they did before. Our ranking and our success the last four, five, six years has helped to do that. But when you build connections with the coaches and they hear about our program and feel our passion and spend time talking to me about it, then they believe in it, they'll steer the kids that way a little more for us. So the pool will be bigger which in essence probably will lead to more opportunities to bring those kids in. But again, I don't want, I don't want, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to have a global team where it's going to be a bunch of, you know, all international players. I want to recruit the U.S. primarily first. But these international kids are good, and I'm going to bring them, sprinkle them in, in with our team and, uh, and build, a, build a solid team, not just a one-dimensional team. Mike, what's the status of your outdoor facility as we start to move a little closer to spring? We're waiting for the weather to change. When the soil temperature gets up and the grass starts growing, then we're going to be able to, uh, really see it come and really see it grow together. It's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. I encourage all you guys, you always want to come over and take a, tr a walk around it and see it when the weather breaks, come on over. It's, it's phenomenal. It complements our building now. You know, today we're inside, obviously, but we're hitting inside to out, so balls are, are collecting in the range, but we can't get out there and hit off of it yet. It's still sparse, but it's going to be awesome. We're just uh, finishing up the, the logistics of, of managing it and, and, and um, you know, the maintenance, the superintendent, get all that stuff set for the springtime, and then hopefully I think April 11th, is that right, Ben? Is that our dedication? I think that's right, April 11th. Hopefully it's looking good by then, and then uh, by late spring if we can be out on it, and then next fall it should be 100% go. Good. Coach? Thank you. Thanks for your time, guys. I appreciate it.